my son. Yeah. He's five years old. Yeah. We were doing something, and then he was acting like a teacher, right? Oh, that's good. When you grow up, you can be a teacher as your job. Uh-huh. And he says to me something to the extent of, "That's too hard. I have to stand up all day, and there's lots of kids." Oh my god! No, I want to just work from home like you. <laughs> oh my god! He said that. <laughs> he said that to me. His definition what was, was like, your reaction. I was like, "This gets fucking lazy." <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the worst Asian podcast, where a couple Asian American millennials give you our shitty opinions on all things Asian. My name is Linji. I am in brand new attire, aka I took off my hoodie. Yes. Ben, have you changed for this recording? I have. I have. I changed my underwear even. <laughs> That's the only thing you changed. Yes. That's all I've done. Does it even matter that we slightly change clothes in between recordings? Like, does it actually matter? Matter. I uh, uh this is a real question because I went through the hassle of taking off my hoodie and I'm a little bit cold right now. Uh dude, I like how you're like, yo, I went through the trouble of taking off <laughs> one article of clothing. People were like, wow, you are so brave. <laughs> Why fucking hero? Yo, when I put on jeans, like jeans, yeah. that's called putting on effort to get dressed. When I wear sweats, that's zero effort. The same thing. When I take off yes. my oversized hoodie and I'm in a less comfortable state of attire. That is called effort. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you uh, fight this battle alone, sir. Anyways, <laughs> there's no point in us actually changing, is there? Uh, nah, once in a while. I think so. Once in a while, it's okay. It's because like when we do back-to-back episodes, I feel like... The algorithm likes us changing. No, not know. the algorithm I, likes I don't us know. changing. But I feel like when people listen to something back-to-back, or at least in this case, watch it back-to-back, if the people look like they're wearing the same exact thing every single episode, you know what? I'm probably thinking too much about it. Fuck this. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking way too much about it. Never mind. We're 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 recording this on the same day. Uh, I look slightly different. Ben looks exactly the same. None of this really matters because 99 percent of you listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Also, this is all this is all created with a uh, Chat GPT. This um, entire conversation. This, this is all AI. Actually, I'm not even here. I'm not even real. This is all artificial intelligence. You know, the funny po- part is uh, most of the time you are not here. That is true. Most of the time, you do not show up. That is true. Ben, how have you been this uh, 15 minutes since the last podcast recording? Good, yeah, good. Yeah. I got to go to the bathroom. You know, I get to empty uh, my bowels. Um, you supply me with a, with a banana. With a banana, a pre-recording banana just to give myself and Yeah, we need those electrolytes, you know, get ready for this. Um, I also want to just get to the Randy part a little bit early. We just finished recording oh. the Halloween episode. Uh-huh. If things went semi well, you should have gotten that last week or last last week. Yes. But on our end, it went terribly. <laughs> if for some reason there was no Halloween episode in your feed a couple weeks ago, that means it went so horribly that I just didn't even like upload the episode. Oh shit! And when I want a possibility say, now. That is a real possibility because oh crap, it is hard doing a true crime like type of podcast. It's a different skill set. You were saying that, yes. You need to already have memorized the story. And so you can talk about it. But I was stumbling through recalling the it, facts in my head and trying to reread the facts as we were talking about it. Wasn't it wasn't more so you were stumbling. It was more like there was a lot of pauses. And you're like, it's almost like you're like, like discovering how to read. You're like, <laughs> I was, I was like oh, shit. It. I couldn't read now. Because there's so many facts. I'm thinking, do I need to say every minute fact? Yeah, that's what you're doing. Can you're I squinting. skip over some facts? Can I like right. summarize entire scenarios into a sentence or two so we can just move on for the sake of moving on like guys put it this way it's like like a mother cow gives birth to a baby cow and then the baby calf is like covered in slime and it's like trying to like jiggle and prop its way up on its legs and shit i'm honestly not sure how this compares to what we just did but that's like that's like Linji trying to like read the story and the details he's like he's like trying to find his strength to like stand up and he's like meh I must Meh. listen to too many audiobooks or read too many five year old bedtime stories that I can't uh-huh. read real full length adult sentences anymore. Yeah, I was like surprised. I was like, I was like, aren't you just reading it? Like just just read it straight. You know what it is? I listen to the news with my ears and my eyes and I watch it. <laughs> I, I not wait, not with not with your tongue? <laughs> I listen I to my tongue. That's books crazy. via audiobooks. Okay. When I read the news on my phone. You know the thing where when you're reading like a news article, you don't read every word, you skim through it. Okay. So in my mind, I'm processing all the, I'm not processing, I'm obtaining all the facts, but I'm not reading every like. You're like so you're speed reading. You're like twice. speed, yeah. Like you're skipping certain parts. Speed, yeah. So, you're so speed I just narrating. realized now that. You're speed narrating. In most parts of my life, I don't read long adult sentences out loud. Adult sentences. 
or in my head whatsoever. So that's, that's probably part of the reason. This is just a long-winded way of saying we're never doing a true crime episode ever again. There we go. Or just any kind of episode where we have to go through long stories. Yeah, and the worst part was that there's these pauses, and it's like I'm just thinking about like the fucking tragedy that happened. It's like, oh God, please keep going. Giving Ben a chance to... It's just, like marinating. Yes, I was going to say like have all those details marinate in your head yes. as I'm struggling to read English. I told, I told Ninja I'm going to watch a ton of like just happy puppy videos after this. Um, yeah, so I, now love, we're back. I love those. We're back to a regular episode where you and I Thank don't God. actually have to read any fucking shit off of anything. Woo! Hopefully, the energy is a little bit better because yeah. I don't have to struggle using half my brain to read. Also, yeah, there was an annoying haunting. There was like a haunted toilet that was playing it's in the not, background. Not right. It's no? the only copyright-free <laughs> horror music I could find. Yes, from the fucking internet. Yes, uh, mostly we couldn't we couldn't get Stranger Things to give us a song. Nope. So. Nope. And yeah. we don't have that kind of money. Yeah, we didn't, couldn't get the... Dun, 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 dun. So uh, we used a haunted uh, toilet noise. Okay, man. Um, the topic for today's episode is uh, things our Asian parents never taught us or Ooh. things we wish our Asian parents would have taught us. You can just Ooh. take out the word Asian. I think this, some of the stuff that we have listed here probably applies to every parent period. Yeah. I just like to put the word Asian in it because at this point, after two years, every title has to have some kind of Asian element in exactly. it. Exactly. It's like, guys, um, what kind of Asian fuel do you recommend for your car? What kind of Asian <laughs> fuel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you know, know technically, there what? is some fact to that because if the... No fucking way. I'm saying if the manufacturers of the fuel are from Asia, uh -huh. if it's a Toyota branded uh, like fuel... Really? Or like oil. Uh -huh. That is an Asian fuel. Okay. I'm just saying. All right. Never mind. So there you go then, guys. If you know, um, please give us your recommendation. All right. Let's get into the actual fucking talk. But Ben... Stuff your parents taught you, stuff your parents didn't teach you. Yes. Um, did your was your dad hands on teaching you things? Because my parents were genuinely not. Uh, when they when they wanted to be. The fuck does that mean? When they want, when, when they had time to teach you? Not time. It's like when I fucked up. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, and they'll be very uh zero to a hundred. Oh, uh, so it went from I don't give a shit what you're doing until you fuck up. Yeah. And then suddenly they're just lecturing you about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. acting like you should have known the entire time. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. So yeah, a lot of times I have to pretend I, you know, I, I have to lie. Like I remember once I used to um, to practice how to drive. I would sneak out and uh, take my take my dad's car out, his minivan. Wait, you actually stole, quote unquote, stole your dad's car to learn how to drive? Yeah. So Which every car was night, this? This was the minivan. The minivan. Then. Okay. So I remember one time. Um, <laughs> one time, I, uh, you know, it's it wasn't driving around the block that wasn't hard. That's all I used to do: drive around the block, practice that, right? But After then, three years, Ben could only drive uh, clockwise. Yes, <laughs> he exactly. couldn't make any couldn't left make turns. You couldn't make, make left turns. I can't make any lefts, guys. I will run you over. But then I remember, um, you know, since we have a, a parking lot, we have our space. At the end of the night, you know, all the cars are parked. But, you know, the way it is, is like we go down a hill. And then my dad has always tried to teach me to do it, everything in one shot. He says that if you're a good driver, you're able to maneuver into one smooth motion. Oh, That's you mean like into be. the parking spot? Yeah, without jer being jerky. That's how he says. 24 point U turn. Right. So, so I still remember. <laughs> so there was this. Uh, our, our minivan was white because Korean people love white cars. Asian people reason. love white cars. Yeah. And fucking our neighbor at the time was, it was a white Accord, I remember. And I remember, you know, I'm trying to do what my dad always tells me, but mind you, he never taught me. So I come in and I try to make the turn. And I remember I <laughs> swiped the car that's parked next to us um, pretty badly on our bumper. You know, I felt oh, it. Oh, you swiped his car with your yeah, car. It was actually a girl too. I when you were trying to park. Yes. Was there anyone in that car that no, no, it was okay. late at night. No one I, I remember I parked it. Um what's it? I scraped the side, right? Oh, so fuck. it didn't bump it or whatever. I come out, I'm looking, I was like, oh my God. Right? I'm And I'm, you can't run away because that's No, it's my neighbor. It's your neighbor's parking spot. They're yes. gonna know. Yeah, so so I was like looking at it and um for anyone out there that remembers those mentals commercials. The, the fresh maker, you know, you have a mental. You would take a mental and like, and then all of a sudden you have out. like a light bulb come on. So what I did was I um, I went back home, and I remember I grabbed anything that was white paint related. So I grabbed all the white out that I could find. Did you really grab white I, out? I, I went to go <laughs> grab white out. I went to go grab um, there's a thing that you put like a top coat for like nail polish. So I went back out, and I remember it was like certain streaks, and I painted this gar uh poor Get girl's the fuck car out of her here. cord her. Her fucking bumper. I used all the white out that I could have, and then I put the top coat on. And now I was just thinking, I was like, I pray to God, I hope both your cars are white. Yes, but my car, because since it was my front left, 
she wasn't gonna ever see it, and our car was already banged up, like the bumpers. Oh, so you couldn't tell what was new or old. So yeah, so there was no way. Like I just nicked it, you know. And hers was pretty so more brand new, obviously. But for as long as I remember, she never figured it out. They never approached you about they it. Never ever get the fuck out of here. Never figured it out. Was this a really light scratch? It was a light scratch, but it was a scratch. Even that night, you could like you could see it. It was gray, like. It ripped off the paint. There's no fucking way that she didn't realize that. She, she didn't realize. No one realized. My dad, especially if you have a new car, people know or they see the scratches more easily. It wasn't like brand new, but it was like fairly new. And I know my dad. If he found out, I would know because he'd be like, "You motherfucker, did you fucking paint?" Oh, uh, he, he would have brought up. Yeah, too. he would. He would have. You know. So your dad never also found the scratch that was on your car. Nope. Uh, to this day, I don't think my dad does not know the story. I just realized that he does not know the story. Oh, that's oh, that's kind of funny. You know, that's one of the privileges I always say about having a really old car that when you get these like sl- slight like dings and dents and everything, yes. either you don't even realize it's new or you just don't give a shit because you already have so many of them. Yes, yes, I yes. was driving last month. It's I'm not so sure true if, though. You're so right, man. I'm not sure if I told this story, but I was driving last month and I stopped at a red light and then the car behind me in a very slow pace hit my car from behind. <laughs> yeah. So he hit the back of my car. It was actually a high school student Oh, I think you did tell me about this. I did remember. I tell you or did I tell on the podcast? I'm not t- say it again. Who cares? So the kid hit me yeah. very, very lightly, right? And I have my 2009 Toyota Rad 4, which has multiple scratches. Like yes. It's, 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 it's not brand new. Bro, at this point, you're actually making money driving that. Thing. So he hit me. I, got, I put my car in a park. I turned on my hazards. He turned on his hazards. I got out of the car. I saw that the kid was like, oh, fuck. You know, he had his like, hands in his face. He was yeah. like, what the fuck, right? He comes out of the car. He says, I'm sorry. I was tightening my belt. And then I let go of the brake. Oh. He was tightening his, his the yeah, belt on belt. his pants or something. No, his oh, pants. Ba- oh, wow. Because I saw him struggling with his belt on his pants when he was getting out of the car. What the fuck? So okay. I looked at the back of my car. And in my head, I'm like, I can't tell what's new or old. And it wasn't like a big dent or anything. Yeah. So I said to him, are you safe? Are you cool? All right. Just just go to school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah could, if it was anyone else. You know, they could have busted his balls like, oh, you got to pay 500. You know, like people like yeah. to try to fucking like horse money. I mean, out of I'll it. be honest. Even if I had a new car and he scratched it and there was some uh, light scratches there. If it was like, yeah, I would probably go through the hassle of just like figuring it out so I can get it taken out. But because yeah. my car is so old and the scratches just blend in with the other scratches. You know, that's the thing. I don't understand why people have to have the need or affinity to have a brand new car, especially if you don't have a parking spot. I really don't see the point of it. Like we have some of our friends, right, that have Pretty nice cars. Most of them have nice cars except for us. Yeah. And <laughs> I think we're not, yo, think about it. Literally, we're the only two people that either don't have a car or don't have a nice car. Look, I remember when I had that, I made the mistake of buying a fucking BMW. It was a nice car. Oh, but remember fuck, that? I forgot. Ben used to be cool. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a really nice car. and But I also did not miss how much fucking money I had to put in that It bullshit. was a coupe, too. It was a two-door was a coupe. coupe. BMW. All-wheel drive. It was nice. It was actually nice. It was actually very nice. Ben yeah. could barely fit in that car. I could not fit in the it car. Was like, so like they had small. like those cool things where, like, you know, like the arm will give you the seatbelt and shit. I swear to God, it, it sounded like Jarvis. You know, it was like, it was a nice car, but I totally forgot you had that car, dude. Yes. And I just remember it. Um, oh, dude, uh, that car just had so much troubles. Thank God. I, I, to the guy I sold in, uh, in the Long Island, yeah, I ripped you off. Sorry, bro. But anyway, um, let me tie this part into something that I think our parents actually don't... Um, oh, teach us? Don't teach us about. And like, this is not to say that you bought that particular nice BMW for this reason is, yes. but I wish my parents would have told me or instilled it on me that... Oh, I see, I see. That I shouldn't give a shit what other people think about me financially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whether I'm wearing, I don't know fucking know, like Old Navy branded clothes or like no branded clothes or I'm, or I'm driving my beautiful, reliable 2009 Toyota RAV4 with... Lots of scratches from high school students. Right. That I shouldn't give a shit. Now in my life, I've come to that realization. Yeah. Uh, but I wish like my parents and like a lot of Asian parents would just somehow instill onto their kids that we don't need to like have everything being a uh, dick measuring contest, right? Like it doesn't yeah. like you have a nice car, you you get a Tesla, then I get a Tesla just for the sake of having a Tesla. Yeah. Uh, actually, my dad was really really get it through my head like, yo, dude, like you don't need this shit. Oh, your dad actually did teach you this. Yeah. I remember when um. Uh, What's it? We'll throw our age out there, but I remember one thing. Our back age then, is a hidden fact, Ben. Yeah. So, you know, back then, um, what's it? The fashion was Jenko jeans or South Poles. Um, what's it? I remember I really wanted a pair. Oh, Jenko jeans, South Poles, Echo yeah. stuff. The Echo stuff wasn't so much a problem, but with the Jenko jeans, I remember 
I remember one time I bought it and I showed it to my dad and my dad's like, you're returning that shit. And I remember like I was arguing with him so much. What he was his like, first reason why he said to return it? He said, it looks fucking stupid as fuck. <laughs> Yo, he said, you look like a fucking moron. I can picture your dad saying this. He was like, holy shit. How fucking... Yo, you're a fucking loser. This is what you guys are fucking wearing now? This is this is for men? And you were buying those jeans because everyone else because had Because everyone it. was having them. You know, yeah. UFO pants, right? All that shit. Um, baggy was in back then. I just remember it was like light sky blue denim you know <laughs> it's horrible. yeah and my dad was like yo this is, he was so disgusting he was like god you're such a bitch but was he just trying to say you look stupid or just yeah. don't care about being cool yeah he was cool, like cool cool yeah that was the thing he was just like he was like dude like this is this is ridiculous man. don't buy this shit why because everyone else is doing trust me and looking back on it now i'm like dad like thank god like when he wanted to just tell me like yo don't do certain things he was right you know, especially when it came to clothing. But did that one like actually stick in your head? Like, did you take from that experience that I shouldn't care about other clothing? Because it's hard. It, as a teenager, it's hard. As a teenager, it's harder now with kids now. Dude, like I see like kids in middle school. It's like they have the phones. Like I look at them like, yo, this kid looks like he has more money than me. You know? I can't imagine now. You see it, right? If you're a teenager, I don't now. think you can be a cool, quote unquote, cool teenager at school and have an Android phone. Bro. You have to have an iPhone. I can't imagine giving my son like an Android phone and be like, dad, it's not cool yeah. to have an Android phone. I need to have an Apple phone. Put it this way, like kids' hairstyles are a lot more, you know, more advanced now, right? Kids are rocking jewelry, but that, whether or not it's real or fake. But that speaks to the speed of the internet that these trends mature and come and rotate a lot faster right right so like a lot of these kids try to like they want to look like you know like young adults which i don't mind but it's like yo, this is expensive and then like most of the time i see them wearing like air force ones are still a thing yeah but now it's like now the thing is you have to always have fresh crisp air force ones i think that was somewhat the case even back there for us back too. then yeah. but now it's like you have to have it all like on deck right that's what the cool kids it's on deck, bro. On God. I actually don't know what that means. It's on deck. It just means you just it's always have up? to have, have it ready. Be prepared. Bet. Bet. Yeah. Bet. <laughs> on God. You know what I'm saying? It's probably really hard to teach a teenager that lesson to not care about kids. Yeah. Or um, not care about what other people think. Yeah, that's true, man. Because a lot of Asian people, especially older Asian people, care a lot about what their friends want. And, and yes. they care a lot about what their friends think what they have. Right. What I'm trying to say is like, there's Asian people that wear all these glamorous brands, buy all this like nice stuff right. or like have all these nice cars. And this is, it is for the same immature teenage reasons right. why they have it as full bone, like 50 year old adults. The same exact reasons, right? You're just trying to keep up with all your other friends. You're just trying to like one up someone or just at least have the allure that you're not poor. Right. It's the exact same reasons, but 30, 40 years down the line. Right. Um, let's see. Do you remember that trend where like all our Asian parents were like really to Hollister? Like all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah. like they're all into American Eagle and Hollister. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I think that's because all the young kids were into that shit, too. Yeah, but it was such a weird phenomenon. I was like, you saw like really old Asian people wearing like really nice Hollister polos. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And just the, the lines, remember? It was yeah. always old Asian people. That was the trend back then. That's probably why you can't have Asian parents teaching that lesson because they themselves have not learned that lesson. Oh uh, No, my dad would be like, look at these fucking losers. Your dad is the <laughs> exception to the rule, but I would say yeah. 99% of other adults, especially Asian adults that I've seen, yeah. can't teach their kids that lesson because they themselves have not grown out of that phase. Dude, I feel a lot of my, um, a lot of my customers at my job, I'm like, most of this shit is fake that they're wearing. It's Can you crazy. tell or are you just making a judgment based on it? Uh, some, put it this way, sometimes they'll forget some of these items like, one thing that's like the new trend right now is everyone likes these specific Prada sunglasses. Okay. Right? We get people that lose their shit. I had, I, there was one where I had a Louis Vuitton belt. Oh. And it was fake. And I remember. Women's belt or men's belt? I think it was a men's belt. Oh. I think it was like. Are you wearing it right now? No, no, no. I was thinking, I was actually, there was one time where I forgot to wear a belt. I was I don't need a belt, right? And I realized, oh shit, oh shit, my pants were really loose and they were very annoying. So I was like, where's this belt? I, I was like... You went to the Lost and Found to I get I went the to the Lost and Found just to wear it for the time. And I was like, oh, it's gone. So I was like, Sony threw it out or, or took it. But it's, okay. it's been there for a long time. But I didn't realize this. But like, sometimes I'll see these people wearing these Prada glasses. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, I guess that's the fashion. But then I realized there are, a lot of them are fake. Because what you do is that once you look at like a product... Yeah. You look inside. Uh, I guess the... What do you call it? The legs or the arms of the sunglasses? I don't know what you call them. But the sides, right? 
They're supposed to have specific things and you can like Google and stuff. But oh, like, copyright date or a factory or some shit. Model number, serial number, all this stuff, right? None of them have it. Oh, so then you know it's like probably a knockoff. It is. And it looks like the real thing. I thought they were real at first. I was like, whoa, someone forgot their product glasses. I don't think there's anything wrong with wearing fake stuff if you know you're wearing fake stuff and you're not like trying to advertise. I that I agree. Sometimes you just might like a certain style. Like, let's say Hermes makes like a really nice belt and you just they like that the, style. The H, the H belt. Yeah. You just like nice, yeah. like that style. And you can buy like a knockoff version of that or just a off brand. Like, I don't know, Old Navy makes a belt that looks like the same, right? The same exact <laughs> style, but it says yeah. like yeah. Old Navy on the label. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. there's anything wrong with buying a counterfeit thing of a certain brand just because you like the style. It's different though if you're buying the counterfeit stuff and then you're. To impress someone. To impress someone and then you're pretending like you're getting all the real shit. But that's the thing. Like, there's so many posers out there, you know? And that's the thing. Like, it's like you're obviously wearing all this glamorous shit to get the attention. So it's like, I see a lot of dudes wearing like all these like fancy gold chains and stuff, right? With yeah. like diamonds. And now I'm like, look at it. I remember someone left like their uh, diamond necklace, right? And I'm like, this thing is so fake. It was so fake. But oh, you could just feel it, right? You could just feel it. The diamonds you can kind of feel and see. Like, yeah. Up close, you can really, really tell. Yeah, but it's crazy. Like, you're right about the whole thing. Yeah, comparing is one of those things where I've learned later in my life that is just, who gives a shit? And this is like my own take on it. I probably take it a little bit too extreme. Uh -huh. Like my mom was telling me the other day, because um, I'm in the process of uh, buying a new car. Oh yeah, your Bugatti. I think I said this on the past episode, my second car, I just got rid of it because it had too many problems. But I'm in the process of buying a new car and I put a down payment on a car. It's going to come in like two fucking months. Oh, so you really... You yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's happening. Your Bugatti. It's, it's <laughs> no, not my fucking Bugatti. So he's going to get it. It's coming from Italy? I forgot. Where did you... Where did you I forgot. The destination for you was what? They're going to build it in my backyard piece oh, by piece. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So It's like a Lego set. I okay, just, so guys, make sure you guys watch the vlog, the behind the scenes of... Uh, me building my Bugatti. Yeah, it says Bugatti. So I bought a car. It's coming in two yep. months. I showed my mom the pictures of it because you know they, they were curious. My mom always says this to me. But this time she said it like really emphatically. She's like, oh, thank God. I'm tired of you always driving around in your shitty cars. It's so loud and you're pulling up. And then she didn't mean it in a way that like it looks like you're poor. Right. But it's just like she meant it in the way like, oh, take care of yourself. You know, like right, right, it's right. okay to take care of yourself. Right. Like I'm tired of you not taking care of yourself. It's okay to like treat yourself to something. Yeah, that's true. That's her intention with it. So I'm trying to say with me, I probably take it to the extreme where I don't really care. I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss that car. Which one? No, not this car. Oh yeah, the Subaru. I keep the Subaru. About... The the smaller car is gone now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss this one eventually. You should keep it for as long as you can till your son can drive it. The new car I'm gonna keep, of course. And yeah. my my Toyota Rav4, this old one, my first car ever. Just try to keep it. I'm gonna keep this shit forever. Yeah, just try to keep it, bro. I'm gonna drive it until like it's dead. Um, hold on, hold on. What the fuck's my list? Okay, finally found my fucking notes. Where am I? Now? Okay. Uh, some other things we have a, a bunch of things here, but I guess we'll just go through some of the more common ones. Um, I wish I'm not sure if your parents told you this that it's mm -hmm. uh it's kind of a dumb financial decision to just hoard cash, cash. Uh, and this is under yeah. the assumption that you have cash to hoard. Yes. Okay, let's just pretend yes. you you in an alternate world that you had yes. cash to hoard. Yes. My parents, like any traditional Asian family, like it's not that they don't trust the banking system. Uh -huh. Is that because like? traditionally they've always been taught it's, it's safer just to keep your own uh, money yeah i think back then for sure but the power of the dollar back then. the power of just having cold hard cash at your disposal as opposed to trusting like a government bank or just another third party to like hold your stuff i think mm -hmm. that's deeply embedded in a lot of people it's yeah. getting better now but my parents like used to always hold more cash than they actually kept in the bank okay but if you really think about it with inflation and everything yeah a hundred dollars if you're keeping it for 10 years, in 10 years when you actually spend $100, it's only going to get you $80 of value. I agree, yeah. So my parents always talked about like holding cash cash. And then they never said like, oh, maybe just put it in the bank and get your 4% interest on a CD or like you know, or something monetary, right? Gotcha, yeah, 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 yeah. Something minute is better than just sitting on your actual cash. Okay, all right. I see what you mean by there. Um, what's, if I did have cash. If. If I had cash. I, I don't know. I'll probably just, I'll probably just like get an iron probably clean it <laughs> i'll probably hang it you know with a little like, clipboards on the string i'll probably wash it every week did your parents like this is a real question they were into the banking system they weren't scared about like keeping cash somewhere else no that's why my dad is a big proponent about like gold and silver and my dad likes to hold a lot of old money precious metals also precious metals especially so he we kind of went over like his collection i didn't realize how much he actually has 
He's he's a value or of like quantity of quantity and value. Like, oh really? Yeah, my dad has like a. That's when you get. So Linji was kind enough to give me one of his uh, safe deposit boxes. Did I? Yeah, remember? Oh yeah, I did. I did. I yeah, with a gun. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no gun. <laughs> but when I gave it to my dad, my dad was like, "Oh my!" God. He was so happy. By the way, he was so fucking happy. He's like, he was like, "Yo, I could put the really expensive stuff in there." And then he showed me some of the stuff. Yeah. So my dad actually, uh, what's it? And yo, this is the thing too. My father likes to, you know, he's retired technically, right? He, or he just doesn't want to work. This is like what I tell people I'm retired and they look at me like, you just, you just you don't you're, want to You're work. too young. You're too young. There's a difference, right? The One good thing about my dad is that at least with him, his hobby is he likes to collect precious metals, silver and gold, and old currency. So even you can look it up right now. Back then, do you remember they used to, they used to print $500 bills and $1,000 bills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time ago. Long time ago, yeah, right? they stopped it. So if you look at the value of those right now, and we have some, those $500 bills, they go for over $2,000 now. Oh, much more than actual A face value. More, yeah, just regular $500 bills. In condition, does that uh, matter? Because of the scarcity of these bills, the condition obviously affects it tremendously. But just base, it's not that big of a deal. Base, like, let's just say, you know, it's for let's collect PSA 1, right? Let's yeah. just say. That's still like a value. 4x, 4x, 5x ah, of his value. But how much did your dad get it for? Close to face value? He got it back then, yeah, for close to face value. He always collect, he always believed it. I don't know why, but he always just believed in like, he's like, I know this is going to be worth something eventually. Because yeah. I think he was kind of on the same boat as you. He also believed like America is going to go to shit. Whoa, whoa. I don't believe America is going to go to shit. Well, my why dad, do you think? I think, I mean, for most part, it, it is kind of going to shit. It's still a great country, but it's kind of faltering, right? And um, what does that have to do with him collecting stamps? That was the first thing he we used to collect stamps first. I remember I used to do it with stamps with them. The value of stamps have plummeted though. Yeah, now they're and then I guess he just started collecting um coins. I don't know how it started, but then it just kept growing and growing. And I'll help him a lot. So if it's anything with assets, I guess yeah. Don't we don't have a lot of cash? I have some cash, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Going to what you said, um, you know, like for example, Linji has his Pokemon cards. That's like that's going to your Bugatti, right? I think <laughs> partially. That Funny enough, I actually had to sell a few cards to to pay for. I had to sell. A, yeah, you did. Hold on, I had to sell a few cards to pay for the car. Yeah, you did. There you go. Yeah, he walked into the dealership with a suitcase. And he's <laughs> like Pokemon cards. He's like, this is a PSA ten. I have four of these. That should cover for three of those, right? All right, perfect. Great. You know, like it kind of hurts a little bit to sell off your collection. It does. Not that it really matters, because at the end of the day, if I need the money for something, I'll gladly sell off all my cards. You know, like I'm not. Yeah so emotionally attached to them but like your dad like if your dad really needed the money for something i'm sure he would be able to sell it he actually yeah he wants me to help him sell some of his older uh scrap metal as, as you can say but he's into like the hobby and everything and no. he, it's the same thing with me and my pokemon cards i enjoy it as a hobby but if i need additional funds beyond you know normal living expenses i will gladly you know sell a card it's it's not the end of the world yeah it's fine yeah you said um what's it i remember when i was a kid my dad would get like stuff in the on the mail and then he'll be like, from like the bank and shit, right? Yeah. And he'll be like, oh, what does this mean? I had no idea what the fuck it was. You know? Stuff from the bank? You mean you know, letters like, from like the bank? Letters bank? Like, what does this mean? Like APR, you know, annual dividend. You know, I'm a kid. I'm like in middle school. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck any of this shit means, right? And he used to be on my ass so hard, like, like violent. What the fuck is the point of school if you don't understand this? Like, and I'm like, dad, they don't teach me this they shit. They don't teach you financial stuff. Yo, I did not understand the lingo. I was like, dad, I don't know what. I don't know. I didn't know what fucking a balance meant. You know, like I'm thinking balance as like you're balancing your, you know, like you're not falling over. But I didn't <laughs> know balancing. what a statement balance meant. I was like, what does this mean? I was like, that I don't even know. I don't have this. I think being an Asian kid, sometimes you're thrown into the fire and you have to yes. learn life financial things or life living things to translate to your parents that you otherwise should not be learning at that age. Right. That was the problem with my dad. He was so zero to 100 that when he needs you, he just assumes that you know what the fuck it is. And and that it's it's like if your dad is getting sued, he gets like a like a letter in the mail, yes. like say Ben, why are you not a fucking lawyer? Yeah, exactly. Why can't you read this legal mumbo jumbo? Yeah, I'm like, uh, Dad, I have no idea what this means. I was like, I think you need a lawyer. I think that's what they're called. You know, I don't even know what a lawyer is. You know, what's the point of paying for a lawyer? I invested in you exactly in yes. English. Like you should be you should be defending me in court right now. Like you have a suit, right? It's like dad. it's even harder for us because the the language barrier. Even if you understood, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. Even if you understood, I would not know how to translate APY versus APR oh, to my parents. Like, what is that the difference? Would be so, yo, that's like, I get it. It yeah. makes sense to me. I would have to go through a long winded like essay just to get to something that in English I could say in like three sentences. 
Yes. Yeah, dude. I remember when the internet was first being introduced and we had 56K, right? Um, Chase was now introducing uh, like an online banking app, right? When it was like Windows 98 and shit. <laughs> what the fuck were they banking online? I don't know. And then I was trying to do it with my dad, but I didn't know any of the shit either. Yeah. Making an account. I don't. I think we failed eventually. I think as close we got was to downloading it, and after that, it just we just never used it. But he was so hyped about it, uh, but I didn't know what the fuck I was doing myself. You know, I think because at least our parents, being first generation parents, don't yeah. know much, don't have much financial literacy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard for them to pass it on to us. It's like how a lot of Asian people think investing, generally speaking, is a taboo because they compare it to gambling. Oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. That's true. If you were to tell your parents that you're investing, in some ways... My dad thinks that, actually. Yeah, he, he thinks does. It's gambling, right? He does. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because they I come from a that. generation that doesn't have experience with actual, quote-unquote, safer investments. Or like, it's not just um, you know, GameStop and shit. There are oh. actual <laughs> legitimate ways for you to make long-term, safer investments. Right. But because our parents never grew up in that generation, they didn't know about that. They couldn't that even teach true. us about it. You know, it's funny. I think my dad is the only exception, but like, when I talk to him about like cryptocurrency, he's obviously more believer in like, you know, cash and, and gold. Something tangible. You're right. He's 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 that kind of, he's like the Warren Buffett. And like I'm like, I don't know, that fucking uh fat kid from FTX. Right? Sam Friedman? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That fuck- well, he's a genius because he scammed that many people out of that much money. And I think he's getting away with it, right? I think I think he's gonna get away with I think he sold like no. eight billion. He's gonna go to jail. He is? The people are not gonna be made whole. Right, but he himself is not going to get away with it. He's going to oh, go to jail. I think I think he's getting away with this shit. So my dad, I make sense with him, but it's the same idea. He's like, no, don't. It's it's a scam. It's bullshit. You know, same thing with investing. He's just like, I don't, you know, believe in it. But that's true. I never thought of it that way. It is kind of a yeah, like a, it's like an Asian mentality because a lot of Asian people grow up where there's people in their families that are actually addicted to gambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they lose a lot of money yes. in some circumstances from that. So when they see something like. Uh, stock investing in the Western culture. They're like, so you just put your money in there. Sometimes you make three times the amount. Sometimes you make nothing. Isn't that, if you boil it down to them, they're like, it is that so sounds like gambling. gambling. Yeah. It sounds like you're at the roulette table. Roulette, roulette table, yeah. Roulette table, and you're yeah. like throwing a ball, and it's like 50 50 chance. Yeah, I remember I was trying to explain investing to my dad, and he was just like not trying to buy it. I was like, and I was trying to use it, you know, companies like Apple, you know, easy to understand. Like, this is a companies big company. Companies that like, it's like that. You use, you use these products. You know, like it's tested and true, right? He's like, nah, it's not. It's not like that. It's, it's all fake out there. Because they think in some ways you're being scammed. Yeah, they think it's 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 no matter what, it's still manipulation out there, which you know? is partially true. You trusting your money with them with a company, that's bullshit. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, you're telling them wrong. But there was no one around to teach them any better. It's not like we as kids right. knew anything. I was like, that's true though. You're now right. that I'm older, I could say like I don't really invest in stocks. One by one, but I'll invest I in that, yeah. ETFs. Yes, yes, uh, which yeah. is, you're investing in a bundle of different stocks for like right. a particular sector that Tech, you pharmaceutical, right? So like food, there are yeah. safer ways of like investing, and that also is why it's harder sometimes for people of that mentality, like our parents, to mm-hmm. quickly build wealth. Because there is a lot of times when people yeah. that do the proper things with their money, and I don't mean like fucking you know GameStop or like crypto where you like make 20 fold or something you don't mean you don't mean dogecoin no i don't mean like dogecoin <laughs> but there are a lot of dogecoin millionaires oh man i'm trying to say like making your money work for you as opposed to always right. constantly working to make every single right. dollar definition of wealth right there's like a combination of doing both things both working hard and having your money also do some passive uh work for you as well like our parents are not of that mindset so That's they never true. taught us that that is very true yeah you're right about that it's uh for them it's like they need to see their tangible goods and service translate into instant money. That's the only way they, they'll believe it. It's hard. So that's why like, when you're raised in this country by yourself, you kind of yeah. have to like, make your own mistakes and figure that shit out by yourself, right? Yeah, that's true. You've told the story about how you didn't know how you were paying your credit card minimum and like accruing oh, interest, man. right? Because yeah. your parents never taught you what <laughs> interest on the credit card is. No, dude. I, yeah, dude. I can't believe it. And then, I remember like when you read it, it's like, it'll take you 30 years to pay this off. I was like, yeah, there's years. I was like, dude, they're charging you extra. You're not actually paying it all. But you never learned that. I didn't learn yeah, yeah. that. I did not know that. Financial stuff is hard. Uh, I'm going to tie this into the next thing I wish our parents would have taught us is uh, sometimes just being smart and working hard. Those things of itself does not guarantee that you'll be successful or respected by other people. Okay. Because to them, 
if you work hard, if you like put in all your max effort, you do good, you do get good grades, you go to good schools, yeah, yada, yada, they think like it one for one translates to you being successful. Yeah. But that's not the case nowadays, especially if you go to college and you go in a field that's not as competitive, excuse me, that is very competitive yeah. or that just does not have a lot of jobs available for you. Right. Like it doesn't just mean there is a clear path to success. That Yeah, that's true. I had, it's kind of like, um, computer science you know a lot of people the big thing was like coding right so everyone was going to coding and all that but then people then realized it's like you're not guaranteed your job and you're very expendable you know so it's like like you said but it look it sounds very credible right like in the whole sense of like oh being an asian family is like oh my son's into coding it's like oh that's amazing yeah or my son has straight a's and he went to harvard yeah so thus he has to be successful right right, right. but it doesn't really fucking uh, guarantee it especially with the price of colleges now right yeah it's not even like a guarantee that college is always the right path to take period after right. high school. You know, at least with you, you have like a very liberal mindset about like, hey, college isn't supposed to be the, the answer. You know? It's not the answer to all your problems. Yeah. And that's the one thing also about my father too. He also expressed that. It was like, yeah, okay, it's okay if you don't go to college, but you got to have a plan. Right. You know? Yo, that's exactly the thing. Like, if you don't think college is your avenue to where you want to be in life, that's fine. Just make sure you're driving somewhere. Don't just like stop in the middle of the road and say, I'm right. not going to make this left turn to college because I don't think it's right. And, right. Then, and then you just parked in the middle of the highway. And not doing shit. And not doing shit. You're right. You should always be moving towards some kind of goal. Right, exactly. Um, My father was also saying that about like the whole idea of like the military. We actually just had an argument recently about it again. My father always tells me, he's like, oh, you know, you're supposed to go to the military. And I tell him all the time, I was like, dad, honestly, I'm really grateful that I didn't go but I do think I should have like went for like military training, like for like a year. You know, like I how think, I don't think that's how it works. You sign up and you enlist for minimum tours like four to eight years, depending on which right, branch. Right. I mean, it's the minimum. It's gonna be four here. But the idea was like I'm like yeah, there are things I do wish I did go for the military to learn like certain you know uh, disciplines. Um, but yeah, because you're not a very disciplined person. I'm not, and I know that's the one thing I agreed with my father. I was like, you're right. The military would have taught me that at a very early age and that would have been really crucial for my development i agreed with him there but i also told him like i'm glad i didn't because i think it would have changed the way i perceive things and my own personality mm -hmm. so that's the one thing and he was like okay you are right about that because i do he that's the one thing he agrees like i don't think you'll be the son i grew up to you know see now but as opposed where was to, his butt the butt was your folk you're like a goldfish you're a fucking, <laughs> fucking moron you know, I'll tell you one thing, you forget. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, crux of the whole situation. Yeah, my parents taught me discipline just through their actions, but I guess your dad didn't teach you that. Was it that your dad didn't teach you that, or was it that you were just a very difficult kid to teach discipline to? I was very... Specifically I was, discipline. I was really difficult. I was saying before, like, I remember just randomly me being in church. Mind you, a big church, right? You know, and it's a Catholic church, so it's, it's, you know, it's quiet. And I was just literally in the middle of service, just start like, nah. like just <laughs> yell, blah, blah, blah. like I was elected, but I was fucking yelling. Yo, Are guys, we? just in case I did not release the Halloween episode, you don't get this elected buzz joke, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, dude, I was fucking elected buzz in the, and then my mom would be like, Yo. like she was like, I feel so bad for her, but just in the middle of fucking service, and it's like very serious church shit, right? No, but that's not even discipline. I was so fucking... When you say that your child needs to learn not to randomly scream in the middle of church bro. service, I don't even consider that discipline. I, I was such a That's piece of... That's just like proper manners. Yeah, I just... I was just so fucking stupid. And like, I was so rebellious. Like, the more I didn't want to do something, the more I fought it. But I remember so many times, every time my mom forced me to church, yeah. I used to always make a scene. And my mom, wow, she, she, she fucking stuck to her guns. She didn't give up. We finished service every time. And she was just bitch at me at the end of service. Yeah. And, you know, that's like an hour long. Kudos to her. But, yeah, I, uh, yeah, discipline was one thing I wish I, I learned. Or I don't know. If, I don't know how your dad could have taught you that. I, I think he's going to have to drown me. Just like <laughs> waterboard me. Waterboarding yeah. you. Like, I don't know how you would have instilled that onto a kid that screams out in the middle of church service. Right. I wasn't like the type of kid that like, you know how some kids are just like deliberately like violent or like, you know, commit crimes you know what i'm saying so you were screaming because you thought it was funny i just yeah i just thought it was funny just to be annoying i never was malicious 
That was the thing. I was never malicious towards anyone. Even though your actions came off as you're like disrupting the I service. I was disrupting, yeah. Right. You know? But in your mind, you just thought you were making a little joke. Yeah. Put it this way. I remember when I was in Did Saturday, your dad hit you? My dad. Oh, yeah. All the time. Okay. All the time. Hey, guys. If there's ever any proof that uh, physical violence towards your kids does not guarantee no, proper training. It does not. Ben is the example of that. Yes. Um, I will tell you this. I think my mom and dad both tried both the right way and the wrong way. My dad was the he was the wrong way, obviously. Just yes. he was just extreme. He was just too extreme. My mom, I apologize. Her, she was she was a saint about the whole, yes. whole thing. You probably took advantage of your mom. Yeah, and I didn't realize it. And I if my mom and dad were on the same page in their strategy, I guess, then maybe it would have it would have worked. But hindsight yeah, is always People don't realize when you are a parent, yeah. it is a job for two people. You it really is. You both have to be on board with the same style of parenting, with the same lessons you're trying to teach your kid. You can't really be like how they have it on TV sometimes where one parent is like the good cop, bad cop. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain situations certain, maybe, certain. but I feel like you really have to have this team effort in like raising a kid and you have to teach the same lessons. Otherwise, I, the kid gets confused. Can I ask you like when you are scolding, right, your, your child? Yeah. Is there a lot of times where it's you and your wife together, like, you know, you know, explaining why, what they did wrong? I you, you notice that? I think for the most part, and there are clearly examples when I don't do it, but I think I yeah. try my best to explain to my kid when there is a lesson to be learned that right. I try to be very calm and to the point about it. Not in a bad manner. Sometimes I'll even lead off the conversation with, I'm not mad, but I want you to understand this. And then I'll say the thing. I can, I can tell when, you know, when uh, your son does do something wrong and, you know, you're trying to explain to him why you're upset and what he did wrong i could tell you know the way even though i i can't understand it yeah it's the tone that you use and i can ask that you're asking questions yeah and then you give you actually give him a chance to explain himself you know so that's a good thing i'm like oh okay that's the right way of doing it that's how i would try to do it too. yeah and my wife and i are on board we have the same parenting style so i think like that's why for us right. it's a mutual effort to like teach your kids the same way right i realized for me my mom and dad always did like separately. It was rarely that they both were like, you know, because my mom was always upset at me for her reasons that made her uh, me upset. I mean, my dad for other reasons. Yeah. So like, I remember like, I used to go to Saturday school for Korean school, but it was based in the church. Big waste of money. It was a huge waste of money. <laughs> I, 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 you know, they, I remember they'll sign me up. I'm like, you guys are just wasting your money here. Just give me the fucking money. How many pages of stamps did your dad have to like throw in the garbage? It was a lot. And like, just to pay for I, that. I just, I just remember like, it was so bad that I took every chance. As soon as I was done, you leave, right? But you're supposed to, you get your regular Korean school, right? You're supposed to learn Korean, right? But afterwards, there's a special class, right? Which actually, in hindsight, I was like, damn, I, there was actually a lot of cool uh, courses. Like learning calligraphy was one class. That's so fucking useless. I'm sorry. I'm I just know, that but, parent. But the fact that there was people out there, like now it's like a lost skill. It is. But the it? fact that, like, that's really expensive. Like if you go to college now or even try to find like a calligraphy, a calligraphist or whatever it's a lot of money yeah but they're offering they had the real paper the rice paper the real ink like the traditional oh, like, shit. they had the real stuff and i didn't give a fuck i was drawing dragon ball remember <laughs> i was drawing dragon ball with the fucking they're like and the at least was, you weren't drawing penises i wasn't i was just drawing cartoons and the teacher was that's really good but that's not what you're <laughs> that's supposed not to calligraphy. do and i remember it was so bad i used to run and like try to leave school and the nuns were chasing me like come back and you know like and I'm like, ah, you know, I was like, I was so, I was such a brat. Maybe your parents didn't get to teach you a lot of these things we're talking about because they're too busy just trying to rein you in, right? Yeah, they were, they're busy grinding and I feel so bad for that. Oh my God. All right, Oz. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> One thing I think we can both agree that we wish our Asian parents would have taught us, yeah. or at least a lot harder, uh -huh. is to learn our fucking language better. Oh, uh, yeah. I know you joke about wasting money on Korean school, yeah. but... I really wish, and I'm not trying to blame my parents. I no, really no, no. wish because, you know, they just didn't have time. I really fucking wish my parents, like, somehow... Like, were able to, like... I don't know how. This is yeah. just, like, I really wish that overall my life scenario was in a way that I could have learned my language so much more. Can I ask you, um, listen, when you were younger, were you speaking more Chinese back then? And it just got worse? Or you just never, ever, like... So my level of Winslow, which is a different dialect of Chinese, is not very useful in the real world. It's not, it's not a lot of people speak. Right. So okay. us in the house, we spoke that dialect. So my level uh, okay. of that dialect is on par with what it was before. Like, it has not gotten worse. It has not gotten better. It's the same got thing. Got you now. But because I saw my parents so, or so little during the day that whenever we interacted, it was obviously in that dialect. So there was no time for them to... Expand on it. To even, like teach me more of that dialect. Got you. 
In addition, there was definitely not time for them to teach me a more common dialect like Mandarin. Mandarin, right, exactly. That was the whole point of Saturday school, but I was like, you such a shit kid that I never took school that seriously. Yeah. So maybe this is less a complaint about what my Asian parents didn't teach me and what young Asian kid me could have taught myself a little bit more, put in more effort to like learning. Do you think that your Chinese got is much better now though, as as before though? As shitty as my Chinese is, it is it's improved. It's improved beyond where it is because I'm putting the effort to teach, teach my kid right. Chinese. You know what's crazy? I asked so many people like, oh, how do you speak Korean? Especially ones that aren't Korean. But ABCs? Yeah. Uh, no, ABKs? Just, ABK, no, no, just like a white kid or like, you know, like a black girl, you know, like they could speak great Korean and they sound Korean. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's a lot of them. It, let's, I'll go to K-Town and sometimes, you know, if a girl's trying to hit on me, yeah. they think speaking to me in Korean makes me more attractive. I'm like, just for the record, <laughs> I don't, I speak, don't <laughs> speak jack shit in Korean. I am very impressed. Yes. But at the same time, I'm like, you're, you're making me feel dumb. Yeah. I'm like, this, like, it's, it's, it's hot. But I have no idea what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the subway station's that way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, look, uh, do you want to ask this Korean guy? But the number one thing they always ask is like, oh, it's just, they'll watch K drama. Yeah. Right. Everyone says that. Right. Just watching that. shit. But then I generally don't have a lot of K drama shows or whatever shows that I like to watch. That I'm like invested in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that's the thing with you. If you still try doing that, but I don't know if that's actually doable. There was one phase where I was trying to learn more Mandarin and I was watching a lot of Taiwanese dramas. Okay, right. I did pick up a little bit more, but uh-huh. I swear to God, the only way that I personally have been able to learn more is just by using the fucking Chinese. Uh-huh. So instead of being a sponge, I'm also like squirting out Chinese as well. <laughs> It's a bad, it's a bad you're way dripping, of like, you're, you're dripping the Chinese. I'm like dripping the Chinese out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In addition to absorbing it, I'm also squirting out the Chinese. Yeah. So like talking in Chinese with my son, <laughs> with my wife, like that has been the only way that it's like subconsciously actually been reinfor- reinforced in my head. Right. Take for example, I watch, I've been watching anime dubbed, no, no, wait, not dubbed, subbed in Japanese for almost 30 years. Oh, okay, okay. All I know how to say is like, nani. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, you haven't picked up on or the like Japanese. Konnichiwa or yeah. Itadakimasu or like some shit. Right. It's, it's not like just because I'm watching something that it's absorbing. Maybe it is, but because yeah. I'm not squirting it back out, yeah. that it's not being reinforced. So Oh, uh, that's true. I, I see what you mean. Is there is there um any other language that you're like, "Oh, it kind of seems more natural for you to like understand?" No, not really. Like, no? no. Oh no. Like I noticed like for me like Spanish has become a lot more easier to like I could understand it. That's cuz you're in the restaurant environment where in the background you're always hearing Spanish. Right. So, by so, so osmosis not, you're you're uh, gaining some of it. Right. So it's like it's really interesting. I'm like, oh shit, I can understand what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. As opposed to like a Korean it just still feels like I'm like, man, this is really a Ben like struggle. probably the only way that you because you're not going to really yourself take the effort to like Go to Korean school, right? No, like, no, definitely not. Let's just be real. No, For no, no. time-wise, investment of your money, yada, yada. The only way, hypothetically, that you could learn Korean is if you just move to Korea. Yeah. But if you move to Korea, you would have to live in a place that's not like full of foreigners. Because if you live in a place that has like a lot of uh, Western people living, you would probably by default go to like a Western bar yeah. and just speak with them in like English, right? But I would feel like those Westerners are actually making a... Those people are there to actually learn Korean. Yeah. And their Korean would be a lot better. So by default, I might make them worse. But for you, the only way that you're going to fucking learn is if you go to like a very Korean place where there are not a lot of Westerners and you're forced to learn. So you would learn a right. little bit every day. That's like the only way in your entire life now yeah. that you could learn Korean. It's crazy too. There's a lot of um, Chinese people that can speak Chinese and Korean like very well. I'm like, oh, wow. it's that uh, northern border where it's closer to China. Right. There's so many of them now. Like it's, it's a lot more. There's a lot of like Korean waitresses that speak full Chinese when I go to like a restaurant like I, I Dude, see them crazy. speaking Mandarin to other uh, Chinese people that go to the restaurant yeah I remember going through the menu in Chinese wow yeah like I remember I was um, when I was we used to work at the liquor store like very briefly yeah everyone was speaking Chinese and Korean I just remember the owner was Korean but I, I noticed the person that he kept hiring were people that could speak both uh, Chinese and Korean I was the only one that spoke English. Just English. Not just even English, one or the Korean. other. Just I mean, English. English. Or Korean. I was like, that, yeah, that was, it was just English, you know? So I was just like, wow, this is like, this is, this is really fascinating. You know? Like, and you never picked up any of the... I didn't pick up shit. Damn. Yeah. You need to work at more Korean restaurants. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe. Maybe. Or, or the lady I have to be with, she has to be like straight up Korean and like, you know, instill in me. If you're ever with a Korean person as like your long-term partner uh-huh. and she knows Korean... You just make her speak to you in Korean so that you're forced to learn it. That is true, man. That is very true. 
And it's crazy. Like, I've been with some girls that were straight up very Korean. But they spoke to you in, in English? In English too, though. And it was like broken English. No, it was, it was, their English was good. It was, it was fine. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't have enough brain cells. Oh, speaking of uh, dating, I have one thing here. This does not apply for me because I'm very yeah. happily married. I'm glad I met my wife. I'm glad she's Chinese. <laughs> just, but, uh, but there are some Asian parents that uh -huh. they won't say outright, but they will always encourage their kids to date within their race. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Nowadays, like, oh, one. you wish they would do the opposite to say that it's okay to date outside your race. Right. This is obviously not applicable to me. Very happy where I am. Yes, yes. But Ben, are. what the hell? <laughs> Let's just think there was a hypothetical third person here on the podcast that uh -huh. uh, was reinforced by their parents to only date within their race. Like, it would have been nice if that parent, uh, if that kid uh -huh. got some encouragement to say, hey, it's cool if you don't date within your race. Or right. if this town has too many of that particular this town. <laughs> like, this town is all Chinese. Maybe it's yeah, okay yeah. to go to a different town, like, date outside your race. I'll tell you this a lot of my cousin, my, my, my cousin and like his friends, they're kind of with that mindset. But it's not so much that they don't want to. It's more like also they're just intimidated. You know, like they don't know what's on the other side. That's exactly the reason why that they should like give it a shot. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when you're always used to a certain uh, a style of partner or like a certain type of like in a flavor, certain flavor, <laughs> this goes for men and women. Yes. We're not directing this at women. Nope. Like a certain not. flavor of the opposite sex or the same sex or just the partner that you're interested in. Uh -huh. I think things get stale, right? Or at least... You don't know what's on the other side of the fence. Even if that's not who you want to marry, uh -huh. at least like be open to exploring. Yeah, I think like if you just have the idea like it's okay to, you know, like instead of just having this weird like wall for some reason, like yeah. some weird like uh, superiority. God, I not I even hope superior, not. but just like, just, a, you know, whatever reason it is. Yes. I just hope it doesn't exist. Like you're just more open minded. Yeah, I think that's one of the privileges we have of being raised in New York City. Especially, you know, like our elementary school was pretty diverse enough that, you know, we didn't see color. It was cool enough that we were able to experience other different history lessons about other cultures. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. Like I said, when I meet like people that aren't Korean, um, you know, girls that will come up to me and speak to me in Korean. I'm like, holy shit. And they sound Korean. Yeah. I encourage it. I hope it's happening more. I think it's happening more now, you know? Or at least like... It's not being discouraged. Even if you're not encouraging it, you're not discouraging it. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If anything, I've noticed a lot more in my, um, in my apartment. I'll, I notice a lot more interracial. Yeah, that's good. You know? Which I'm like, oh, I'll look at it. It's like, oh, it's like, I'm like, oh, you're definitely Asian. But I was like, you definitely have a little white in you or something. What the you fuck? Know? You definitely have a little bit white then in I'll you. See, and then, you know, I'll see the whole family. It's like, I was like, oh, look at that. I was right. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a white lady and like a Korean guy. I'm like, oh, good for that. I think from like an old school Asian parent mentality maybe they're hopefully it's less about the actual race for the race itself oh right, right, right. and it's more about just i the parent just want to would feel that the culture would be too different that i wouldn't understand this so that's why they encourage their kids to date within the race yeah that's all yeah because like if you're gonna have like a chinese wedding maybe they're afraid they're not gonna have a chinese wedding or i'm, I'm saying maybe it's a cultural thing less of it's an, not a racial thing. race yeah thing. hopefully yeah, you, yeah you would hope it's that i mean I had a friend of mine that was thinking about like getting married. He's like, I want to marry within my race for my parents' sake. You know, not so much it's because they're racist. It's just because, you know, for culturally, it makes it easier. Food-wise, like you said, language-wise, you know, it's mm. just about connecting, right? Yeah. So I do think about that too. If like, if I do eventually get married, like what if culturally they're so different, right? My mom is more open-minded to the point where she says, as long as she's a good woman, I yeah. don't care. Right. Which I'm really, you know, fortunate enough. My dad, on the other hand, he's like, yeah, you know, I don't care, but it will be better because then I could talk to her, you know, and, and the family and stuff, you yeah. know? And I was like, all right, that's true. I mean, it's one thing to say that you want to do that for your parents. That's like a right. you know, sweet way of like thinking about it. But just remember, you can't predict who you're going to fall in love with. Right. Exactly. Ultimately, it's, it's up to you. And it's one thing to just put up an arbitrary barrier to say that you're not Korean, so thus I won't even give you the opportunity. Right. You know, preferences are one thing, but putting up a barrier for the right. sake of putting up a barrier and saying that you're not going to date, I'm not trying to, you know, shit on anyone because everyone can do whatever the fuck they want as long as they're not like hurting anyone. But I would say right. wherever possible, just like don't 100% exclude any ideas. Right. I mean, you, you hit the lottery, you know, you found the love of your life. She just happens to be Chinese. She just happens to be Chinese. Whoa. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that's crazy. I wasn't looking for a Chinese girlfriend. It just happens to be like, look at that. Check mark, check mark. <laughs> you know? 
So I too, hopefully, will you know find something like that similarly. Okay, let me see if I have one or two or one thing we talk about. Finally, let's see. Talked about this. Talked about that. Talked about this. Um, I would just say like the one big thing I wish my parents like didn't have told me is work isn't life. Oh, life is not built for work. My okay. parents never told me that directly. I only learned that lesson through their actions. So it's not yeah. like their fault or anything. Right, right. But when you see your parents like working so hard. You think that's the norm? So I always right. grew up with like the mentality that, oh, everybody works six, maybe seven days a week, right? Right, yeah. Everyone has dinner at 9.30 at night because that's right. when their parents get home. Like that's right. the environment that I grew up around. And so in my mind, and and you know this, Ben, for the first like good chunk of my life, I was a workaholic. That's just like you, how... Yes, you. yeah, you were, man. I remember you were school-wise and work-wise. You were just putting it all on your plate. To me, that was just a normal thing because I absorb that through the actions of my parents uh so th this is less about them like not teaching me something and this is more just i wish i would have somehow learned earlier in my life that work itself uh -huh. is not all encompassing of what there is to do with your life right work has its has its meaning and it has its purpose right but work itself should not be the purpose right it can't be the all purpose it should be just a vehicle for you to achieve something else that you want out of right. your life I mean, as long as I remember, out of everyone, to this day, you've always been very, very hardworking. So it's good now, like, you're kind of, um, what's it, you know, reaping the benefits, right, of everything. Pokemon cards. Yes, Pokemon <laughs> cards, Bugattis, you know? So it's, it's good now. I think also, like, now that, you know, you're a father, how much of it's like, oh, you can, like, at least instill in this with him now. Like, you could be like, hey, want to let you know, I'm very proud of you, what you're doing, but, like, dude, like, you got to chill, you know? My son, yeah, he's five years old. Yeah. We were doing something and then he was acting like a teacher, right? Not directly acting like a teacher on purpose, but okay. he was talking to me and acting like a teacher. And I was okay. saying to him in a nice way, oh, that's good. When you grow up, you can be a teacher as your job. Uh -huh. And he says to me something to the extent of, that's too hard. I have to stand up all day and there's lots of kids. Oh my God. And then I said, well, every job is difficult. Every job is uh -huh. tiring. A lot of jobs you have to stand up. He's like, no, I want to just work from home like you. <laughs> oh my god! He said that. <laughs> he said that to me. His definition what was, was like, your reaction. I was like, "Holy shit!" In my head, I'm like, "This gets fucking lazy." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because he's because he sees. Holy shit, that's true. You're he right. sees me as the example. Yeah, he sees like he's like, "Oh, dad's working." When he goes home, he sees a podcast. So he's like, "Oh, dad's working." Oh, dad's at home all the time. When he does quote unquote work, he's just sitting in front of the computer at home. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. I want to do what dad does. <laughs> Yo, that's so true. He literally is going to grow. He's like, once he's 18, he's like, all right. How do I sit in front of a computer yeah, and make money? Like, all right, dad, where's my office? <laughs> <laughs> On to our favorite part of the whole oh, podcast. Oh, my gosh. Ranting and raving. This is the part where Ben and I like to bitch about something bad or uh, rave about something good. Ben? Do you have anything good? Do you have anything bad? What's going on with your life? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see if I look the buzz again. Uh, nothing bad, but uh, um, stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's talking about a uh, a manual escalator. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also true. Like when escalators don't work, they just become stairs. I will admit, I get very upset when um, I think like you know the MTA and stuff. And I'm like, oh, there's an escalator, and it's coming downwards though, and I have to go up. Wait, it only goes one direction, and it's not the direction I need it to go. Oh, but there are, next to it is a set of regular stairs. Yes, and that infuriates me so much. That's all. I just hate. It's just like uh, sometimes when the escalator just doesn't work, and it's just a bunch of stairs. I'm like, oh, and I'll literally try to walk around, seeing like, oh, maybe there's a pair of escalators. Side question: When you take like a long flight of stairs, do you get winded? Real oh, question. Yeah, of course. Do you guys hear winded? Yeah, if it's a long flight, hell yeah. Like if it's the equivalent of, let's say, going up two or three flights of stairs, do oh, you yeah, get yeah. winded? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I guess yeah. that answers your question. Just getting better cardiovascular health and you probably won't hate stairs. No, dude. I, I think it's also just because I'm just big as fuck, you know? I remember I used to... Plus, do you have bad le knees, ankles. What the fuck do you have bad that's on your legs? My legs are okay. They're not as bad. Your shins? Your ankles? No, they're okay. It's, if it's one thing, it's just one shorter than the other. But you know how I knew? Because I used to do training with, this, uh, with these kids, right? Yeah. And there was this one kid, right? He was tiny as fuck. He was like maybe like 120 pounds, right? 
And you know, 120 pounds. Oh, that's like, pretty small. He's okay. small, small. Yeah. He was like, we we're kids too, though. But the one thing, like everything else, you know, I was great at, right? Most, for most kids. But the one thing that I noticed with really small kids, right? And weight wise too, mm-hmm. is that he excelled on the stairs. Like he was, <laughs> he, he fucking crushed it. Like he would, he would be up fucking fresh. He's like, I'm good, you bitch. I'd be like, what? He's like, I could go again. I'm like, and I'm dying. We're all dying. And I'm like, oh, it's because this guy's. That's just cardiovascular health, Ben. I don't know what else to tell you. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But um, if, if for you small people out there, uh, let me know how you do on stairs. Have wow. you ever been on the Stairmaster at the gym? The Stair Machine? Stair, stair Masters, I could, I'll, I'll pump it out. Um, but So it's the exact same shit. I don't know. It's more work. The bigger you are. It's the same thing with squats and deadlifts. All those kind of exercises. Yeah. The bigger you are, it's just, it's the more output, it's just, it's more annoying. I guess you're never going to live in an apartment with a walk up flight of stairs. Oh man, dude, the worst is like, if I go see a lady and the first question I ask is like, oh, is your apartment? <laughs> I ask her, is like, you have an elevator? I'm not even joking, dude. I'll ask the girl, I'll be like, I was like, what floor are you on? I'll be, she'll be like the fourth. I'm like, you got an elevator? <laughs> you got an elevator? And she'll be like, no. I'm like, fuck. Ben doesn't see race. Ben just sees flights of stairs. Yeah, I do not. Yeah, it's like, yo, if you live in an apartment, especially in Manhattan apartment. He cannot date you if you live in like a, like a fifth floor walk up. Dude, Manhattan apartments. Every one of them don't have elevators. Yeah, because they're tiny apartments. Where yeah. are they going to fit the elevator? I don't know, dude. But I was just like, please just live in the lobby. <laughs> please tell me you're not in the fucking lobby. You know, like, like, even if it's like a brownstone. Yeah. Brownstones are only three floors at most, and usually. Then, no, like the outside part. That's even worse. The stoop? Yeah, the stoop. I would go up the stoop. I'm like, all right, let me press it. And then, and then it's like, all right, then I come in and then it's like fucking another flight. And it's like, God damn it. So yeah, but that's my nemesis right there. I forgot what I was going to rant about after all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yep. That, you said it well. I don't see color. I see stairs. <laughs> you don't see color. You- I will judge you by the by what floor you live on. Make sure on your Tinder profile, if you're looking, if you uh, match up with Ben somehow, make sure you, yes. you immediately tell him what floor you live what on. What floor you live on, and if you have an elevator. Yes, Max is second floor. <laughs> you live on the fifth floor yourself. You know that, right? I have an elevator. You do have an elevator. So okay. yeah, and oh god, that's the worst when it breaks and it's like late at night, and I'm like fucking hammered. I'm like, oh fuck, I have to take these stairs. Fuck. Or like yeah, or like if, if I have to walk, if I walk Sam, I'm like fuck, I have to carry you, fucker. You know. This is a reason why you don't go hiking, because hiking is literally everything you talked about. Hiking, yeah. But just outside. I like hiking. It's like, oh, it's nice. You know, stairs is just the same shit. You know? Just it's depressing. My God. Ah, uh, what the fuck? What's going on? Oh, uh, change of weather really sucks. <laughs> I forgot oh, yeah. what I was gonna talk about before. Change of weather really sucks. Uh huh. Especially here in New York, you go immediately from hot ass summer to cold ass winter. Bro. The transitional right season. Now. Right now, the transitional season of fall Yo. is like three days. Yeah. That's it. Fall, technically, if fall is three months. No, fall is fucking three days in New York City. Put it this way. We're doing, we do try to do two episodes. I think our first episode, it was a lot warmer. Now. <laughs> that was like three hours ago. Yeah, that was two just hours three hours. Ago. Yeah. Now, it's like, it feels like it just dropped like 15 degrees instantly. Yeah. You know when you're confused about the weather is when you're wearing like a thick hoodie, but you're wearing shorts and flip flops. Yeah. You don't know what you're ready for. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, and you need to have clothing that are like really easily uh, interchangeable. Layers. You need to wear layers in this uh, transitional phase. I know you're saying that you changed and got out of the sweater. I did a uh, very difficult war- wardrobe change. Wardrobe change. You know, it, there was a lot of makeup involved. You know, a lot of makeup. Thank you, thank you to our dre- uh, dresser and our makeup artist out there. Both sleeves had to come out. Yes. Um, <laughs> they had to take every uh every string of fabric. But I just remember I'm wearing the same shit pretty much. And no, you are literally wearing the same shit. And you're not bugging. It's literally it feels different. From before it was now. Yeah. Now, you, if anything, you should have been like this in yes. the first episode, and then you should have worn it. Because now after. I'm cold. Yeah. Are you getting cold now, dude? It's freezing. This episode, I'm freezing. So, so I guess this is round is about the fucking weather. Plus, last month it was raining the whole month. Oh, dude, that was crazy. It was crazy. raining the whole month. Every weekend, it was raining. So if it was not raining, it was only on the weekdays. And every time Saturday, Sunday came, that shit was like raining nonstop. Right, yo, it's been raining just like in general a lot. It right? feels like well, for, for me, I'm. Measuring started the school year, so it's been raining for me since the, my kids' school year started, oh. which is early September. Yeah. It feels like it's constantly been raining. And in addition, I've been fucking sick. Thank God, guys. Thank God. If you are curious, I am. Oh, yeah. uh, I see the light at the at the end of the tunnel. You sound much better. Your coughing has dropped like drastically, bro. I'm still it coughing so a little bad. bit here on the side, but I can get through two episodes without feeling like I walked up two flights of stairs like Ben. Yes.
All right, we are at the outro. Ben, can you go through the plugs while I look up my Asian dad jokes? Yes. By uh, the way, I am running out of Asian dad jokes, so this segment will eventually die off. Oh, um, that kind of sucks. But on the good side, thank you guys so much for joining us again for a lovely episode. I hope you learned something here because I didn't. Well, actually, I did. It was good. You know, just talking about the differences, what our parents could instill. You can find us on all of our major platforms on Instagram, on YouTube, on... I keep thinking Snapchat. I, I, but it's getting to a point where technically I keep... we do have a Snapchat. Oh I, shit! I took the handle. Okay, but we're not doing it. All right, it. so that does exist. But you can find us on Worst Asian Pod. Um, you can shoot us a DM, especially give us some ideas if you like. If there's things you want to point out, check up on Linji as well. He is doing much better. So thank you guys so much for the support. Appreciate it. Thank you guys just for you know checking up on me as well. Thank um, you. I want to do a shout out. Yeah, some of you will privately message me as well. Uh, thank you so much. It still means a lot knowing that you know we can brighten up your day. We just did our Halloween episode. It is very, very scary and depressing. And like I said, if it was not on your podcast app feed a couple weeks ago, that means it went so bad that I did not release the episode. There you go. So maybe it'll be just more bonus content. I'll just store it up on the bonus feed just in case. There you go. If you did listen to it, then... You don't know what that means. If you did listen to it, you have no idea what the fuck that means. Yes. Uh, Just also thank you so much for our uh, monthly subscribers and just anyone that's been, you know, giving us any of donations. Um, We greatly appreciate it we greatly will use it towards the podcast we haven't used it for anything just yet it's just sitting in the bank no um once i just remember we i forgot to buy some gyms i forgot about if you'll know if you were listening to our our past episodes um okay i was gonna say oh one free thing that you're gonna do is uh tell your friends about the podcast uh get tell them to have a listen and you can leave us a five-star review on apple or spotify yes that is actually the most important thing that you can do so i we don't we only have like a hundred or so reviews on apple i there are definitely i can see the stats a lot more listeners on apple than that so that means a bunch of you have not left so please take a couple seconds scroll up scroll down i don't know where it is press <laughs> that five star thing and leave us a written review all right i'm gonna wrap this up with my asian uh, dad joke like i said this uh, segment will eventually die off so oh. for those of you that like this segment um it's gonna come to an end eventually unless i google more asian dad jokes ben what happens when you spin an asian person around and around and around what do you he gets disoriented. <laughs> Yo, that's fucked up. <laughs> is, that, is that fucked up? No, nah, it's good. I like that one. Uh, oriental. No one says Oriental anymore. Uh, we, uh, yeah, no one says yeah, no one says anymore. <laughs> My boss used to say it for a while. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he kept like, saying it to me even after I jokingly told him to stop because he was trying to bu- bu- bug me. Yeah. Which I thought was funny. funny. I was like, Linji, you're my favorite Oriental. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know that? You're my favorite. Like a backhanded compliment. All right, guys. uh, Thank you so much. Yep. Take it easy. Have a good... When's this episode coming out? Have a good... November? No, November? October? December. Who the fuck knows? Just don't get sick. If you're from New York, you know what the weather is like. Take it easy. Love you guys. Bye.